I want to present a nice little result about a special function known as the inverse tangent integral function. So it's defined like this. Ti of x, it's generally called Ti, is the integral from 0 to x of the inverse tangent of y over y dy. This arctan y over y has a non-elementary antiderivative. And so that means that we can't express it in terms of elementary functions. So the best way to express its antiderivative is via just a new function, which we call the inverse tangent integral function. Now this function is in the same family as several other functions, like a dilogarithm or a trilogarithm or the polylogarithm in general. I have some old videos on the dilogarithm if you guys want to find them. Also, there's the exponential integral, which is the integral from minus infinity to x of e to the y over y dy and there's the logarithmic integral. So that's the integral from 0 to x of 1 over the natural log of y dy. Like I said, there's a lot of others. So I want to point out that I have a video planned, I haven't filmed it yet, where I calculate some things about this logarithmic integral. So look forward to that. Okay, so the observation that we want to prove here, which is like pretty quick, and it's found in a lot of different places, including an old paper by Ramanujan, is that for all x bigger than 0, we have the following identity. So ti of x plus ti of 1 over x equals pi over 2 times the natural log of x. And you can extend this to all non-zero real numbers without too much difficulty. I'll let you guys think about what it would look like for x less than 0. Maybe post in the comments. There are probably a bunch of different ways to do this. One of them could be to write this ti of 1 over x using its definition and then doing some substitutions. But I think the easiest way to do it is with a differential equation. So let's set a function f of x equal to this ti of x minus ti of 1 over x. And then take the derivative. So we'll have f prime of x is equal to the derivative with respect to x of ti of x, but that is the integral from 0 to x of arctan y over y dy minus the derivative with respect to x of ti of 1 over x, but that's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 over x of that same integrand, so arctan of y over y dy. Now taking each of these derivatives is fairly simple because we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So we have that set up exactly for our first integral and almost exactly for our second integral. It's just we're composing one over x into what would look like a standard application of fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Okay, so let's take these derivatives. So here the derivative and the antiderivative cancel each other and we're left with arctan of x over x. And here they cancel each other, but then you pick up a derivative of the inside function, this 1 over x. So that's going to give us minus arctan of 1 over x over 1 over x times the derivative of 1 over x, which is minus 1 over x squared. So now let's look at some simplification that occurs. This minus sign will turn into a plus sign by canceling that minus sign out. And then furthermore, this x squared will distribute through here and leave us with an x in the denominator. But now we have a common denominator and we can write this as the arctan of x plus the arctan of 1 over x over x, like that. Now there's actually a nice identity for arctan of x plus arctan of 1 over x. And that, in fact, is equal to pi over 2 all of the time. And there's a neat little geometric proof which involves making a right triangle with side length 1 and side length x and then taking the tangent of the non-right angles in that triangle and then forming some sort of equation that will imply this.
Okay, so we can replace this arctan of x plus arctan of one over x with pi over two. So we have pi over two over x. Okay, so that means we've got f prime equals pi over two over x. Let's maybe get rid of this middle calculation and we'll take it home from there. On the last board, we did some calculations that led us to the following spot. We have f prime of x is pi over two times one over x. I wrote that a little bit differently, but it's exactly the same thing. But now this implies that f of x is equal to pi over two times the natural log of x plus some constant. And that constant is yet to be determined. So why is that? Well, that's just taking the antiderivative of both sides. But now plugging that back in for what we set f of x equal to, we have this inverse tangent integral minus the inverse tangent integral evaluated at one over x equals pi over two times the natural log of x plus some constant which is yet to be determined. So now how can we determine that constant? Well, finding values of this ti of x is actually very difficult, but luckily we know that x and one over x are the same when x is equal to one, because one over one is equal to one. So that'll give us zero over here on the left-hand side. So just to reiterate, I'm gonna set x equal to one, and I'll have zero is the same thing as ti of one minus ti of one over one, which is equal to pi over two times the natural log of one plus a constant. But furthermore, we know that the natural log of one is zero. So that gives us zero is equal to this constant. But that means we can scrub this constant away and we have exactly what we wanted to show. And then from this, we can actually build a lot of nice identities involving plugging numbers into this ti of x function. For instance, ti of 2 minus ti of 1 over 2 will be equal to pi over 2 times natural log of 2. Maybe also interestingly, ti of e minus ti of 1 over e will be equal to pi over 2. And those are obviously just a few of this infinite family of relations that we've just found. And that's a good place to stop.